Okay, in this video we're going to solve an example of an Euler equation. So that's a class of differential equations that are of the form ax squared y double prime plus bx y prime plus cy equals zero. And their solutions are governed by the roots of this associated polynomial known as the initial polynomial. So it's given by a times r times r minus one plus b times r plus c. And the roots, if they are distinct and real, we get a solution that c1 x to the r1 plus c2 x to the r2. If they are non-distinct but real, in other words, they're repeating, we have c1 plus c2 natural log of x, x to the r1. And then if we have complex conjugate roots, we get these uh, solutions that involve sines and cosines. Okay, so uh, in this example, we're going to look at the following example of one of these differential equations. x squared y double prime minus 3x y prime plus 8y equals 0. And we'll look at two solutions. We'll, want, we'll look at one that just uses the conclusion of this theorem straight away, and we'll look at another one which builds the solution from scratch. So uh, using the theorem, we need to look at the polynomial P of R, which is given by uh, 1 times R times R minus 1, because A is equal to 1, minus 3 times R plus 8. And so that simplifies to R squared, and then we have minus 4R plus 8, and we want to set that equal to 0. Okay, so I'll let you guys think about how you'd most like to solve that, maybe with the quadratic formula or maybe with completing the square. But um, I'll just go ahead and notice that we can factor this thing as follows. So we have r minus 2 squared um, plus 4. Great, so what did we do? We split the 8 into two 4s, and that gave us a perfect square binomial and a leftover 4. So we set this equal to 0, and we notice that r minus 2 squared equals negative 4, which tells us that we have uh, roots given by the following. So we have 2 plus or minus 2i. So we take the square root of negative 4, and we get plus or minus 2i, and then we're going to move that 2 over. Okay, great. That means we're down here at this third type of solution, and now we can just write that down. So we have y equals x squared, and then we have c1 uh, cosine times uh, 2 natural log of x plus c2 times sine times 2 natural log of x. And here, the interval of validity is given by 0 to infinity, which is part of the theorem which I left off the statement. Okay, good. So we've got our solution. So now what I'll do is I'll give you another solution which uh, mimics the proof of this theorem, um, but gives you a more concrete uh, example of that proof. Good. I'll clean up the board and we'll do that. Okay. We're ready for our second solution, which is uh, building the solution from scratch. So what we'll do is we'll get, guess that we have a solution of the form x to the r, um, which means we can populate our derivatives just using the power rule. So y prime is r x to the r minus 1, and y double prime is r times r minus 1 times x to the r minus 2. Great. Now we plug those three things into the differential equation, and we'll see that the x squared will build this power back up to x to the r, and the x will build that back up to x to the r as well, which will give us the following. So we have r times r minus 1 x to the r minus 3 times r x to the r, and then plus 8 x to the r, which tells us that we have the following um, r times r minus 1 minus 3r plus 8 x to the r equals 0. Okay, good. But now, notice this is the same polynomial that we had um, in the previous solution to this. So I'll skip how to solve that, and I'll just jump right to the solution. That means r equals 2 plus minus 2i. And then... From there, I'll just notice that uh, our solutions will be of the, f well, we have one solution, which is of the form uh, y equals c1 x to the 2 plus minus 2i plus c2 x to the 2 plus minus 2i, and we need to make some sense out of that. So what does that mean? 
So I'll focus on, uh, sorry, I didn't mean plus or minus there. I meant plus there and minus there. So I'll focus on this first term and the second term will be similar. So what we'll do here is we'll say x to the 2 plus 2i is given equivalently by x squared times x to the 2i. Uh, okay, good. And then that's the same thing as x squared times e to the natural log of x all to the 2i. Good, using exponent rules and using the um, inverse relationship of the exponential and the natural log. But now that's going to give us x squared times e to the 2i times natural log of x. Okay, good. But now that's going to give us x squared times, now using uh, Euler's formula, we have uh, cosine 2 natural log of x plus i sine 2 natural log of x. Okay, great. And so now we can go in here and notice the same thing would happen with the minus. So with the minus, we would have a minus here. That would give us a minus there, which would give us a minus there, um, a minus there, and a minus there. So in other words, we have x squared cosine 2 natural log of x plus or minus sine 2 natural log of x. Great. And then going from this solution to the one we had previously, which did not involve any um, complex numbers in the solution, is just a matter of uh, making a change of variables on these constants. So I'll leave that for you to, to uh, check. Okay, we're done with this example.